Okay, are we ready? You guys ready? Let's go. Here we go. Calling occupants of interplanetary craft. We are your friends. I'm Terry DeRaper from Clatu, and uh, I'm here to talk about our signature song, I think it is. Uh, John and I wrote this in 1975 and began recording it to as Clatu, John, Wallace Chuck, D. Long, and myself. And uh, as luck would have it, I had a job at Sam the Record Man at Young Dundas during those days. And I uh, had access to quite a record collection. I like to get uh, sound effects records. I still use them extensively. This particular record for the beginning of this forest scene is from an album called An Evening in Sapsucker Woods. And uh, you'll hear an owl here. Somewhere in there is an owl. It's actually Terry Brown blowing across a uh, half-consumed bottle of Labatt's 50. You'll know by the tone of it that it's actually a stubby bottle. This is me singing. I sing the intro and the outro. John sings the body of the song and we trade lines in, in the middle. That whole intro that went on there was... Um, we were having a problem getting our songs played on the radio. We'd had three or four singles out. And so we decided to have this fellow wander through the forest, come upon a turntable, and play our record. Uh, it was a, l a little cheeky, I think, but uh, we were idealistic and we had some fun. What's interesting about this recording is the bed track. There was only three of us, and uh, I was on the drums, John played the piano, and Dee played the Mellotron. The Mellotron, still one of my favorite sounds. Uh, Strawberry Fields, Lennon used it, and uh, Bowie's Space Oddity. Lots of bands, the Moody Blues, of course, started it all. But that was the bed track, the bass was added later along with all the other things. Those horns at the beginning aren't actually horns, they were a Moog Sonic 5 that D programmed. He could make this thing a flute, a trumpet. I could only make it do wee wee wah wah for some reason. I haven't heard this in a while. Those trumpets there is what I'm talking about. Um, I often get asked about the drumming in this song. I'm obviously very much a Ringo aficionado, but there was another influence in those days for me. It was a fellow named Michael Giles from King Crimson. And uh, In the Court of the Crimson King is still one of my all-time favorite songs. And uh, it's Calling Occupants, I think, smacks of that a little bit. In particular, some of the drum fills. I went out of my way to emulate his style. Here it comes around again. We are your it was interesting, uh, uh, about a year after we, uh, our first album came out, the Carpenters got a hold of it and recorded this very song. And I'm much impressed with their version. I really like it. and. Uh, I, not only it, did they do a great job, but it was such a stretch for them. They were really stepping outside of their comfort zone and doing what could possibly be described as prog rock, although I like to call it progressive pop myself. This is the, the bridge where John and I go back and forth singing. That's me. That's John. And here we go. Uh, what else about this song would you find interesting? It wasn't particularly this song, but some of the other songs on this first album that uh, are reminiscent of the Beatles, and there was actually a rumor started out of Providence, Rhode Island, some newspaper, that this was the Beatles reincarnate, which was uh, a, a very nice compliment. I mean, to say that we sound like the Beatles is a very high compliment. To say that we are, in fact, them is that compliment a hundredfold. So we were uh, very impressed with that, it was very nice. But we're not the Beatles. 
This is me singing again here. We're getting ready to go to the outro. And that's where some of these Michael Giles-esque drum fills come in. But I wanted to talk about the artwork. Ted Jones did most of our album covers, and they're quite elaborate. And uh, we decided early on that we wouldn't put our pictures or our names on the records. We wanted the music to speak for itself and uh, take away from the, the individuals. The three of us are not necessarily that interesting nor that handsome. So we wanted to focus on the music, so we knew we needed special artwork. And uh, Ted delivered the goods. The sun, the giver of all life with the Mona Lisa face, and the receiver is the little mouse. The mouse became a mascot uh, of ours. He appears on all our record covers and uh, he's been a faithful friend these 40 odd years. It was a long time ago. trying to think of something else interesting to tell you about. Hmm. This album was recorded at Toronto Sound. Terry Brown uh, produced it with us and uh, Rush was in the same building at the same time doing uh, Fly By Night and 2112. Very nice fellows. Uh, we had a great time when they were around. Max Webster was in the studio all at the same time just over here in Thorncliff Park. It uh, was a, a great time back in the day. Is this gonna fade out soon? That's one of my favorite drum fills, that one, with the We Are Your Friends at the end. Yeah, it still holds water to this day. And I said, I, I think Black Cars is not about a car at all, it's about this lady. And so thus came, you know, her skin is cold, China White, and she's a dark angel wearing dark glasses. She leaves, and I said, you know what? It's a good time to do some writing. So I got my list of song titles because that's what I would walk, work off of and I rolled tape and in the 45 minutes she was gone uh, I wrote the Stay Hungry album.